Moscow, Secretary of State Rex Tirson held his first direct talks with Russia's president on Wednesday amid deepening tensions after U.S. missile strikes in Syria and Washington's demands that Moscow abandon support for its main Middle East ally. The meeting between Tirson and Russian President Vladimir Putin came after hours of tense exchanges, with both sides staking out positions that were sharply at odds. Russia made it clear it was unwilling to roll back its strategic alliance with Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. The talks appeared unlikely to bring any significant breakthroughs after last week's missile strike plunged U.S.-Russian relations to one of the lowest points since the Cold War. But despite the growing rifts, some general compromises were discussed. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said Putin might agree to resume an information-sharing deconfliction network with the United States on the country's warplane flights in Syria. Russia suspended its role in the system after the U.S. missile strikes, and Lavrov said it could be restored if the U.S.-led coalition conducting airstrikes in Syria focused only on the Islamic State and other militant groups, and not expand to Syrian government targets. At a joint news conference, Tirson told reporters that Russia and the United States agreed to seek a unified, stable Syria and work together to oppose North Korea's nuclear weapons program. Tirson also said both nations would set up a working group to seek ways to ease tensions. Asked by a Russian state television reporter about President Trump's comments that Assad was an animal, Tirson said. The recent chemical weapons attack carried out in Syria was planned and it was executed by Syrian forces, and we are confident of that. Lavrov retorted, this is obviously the subject where our views differ. Russia is not seeking to cover up for anyone in the chemical weapon incident, he added. Throughout the day, the wide gaps between Russia and the United States were on full display. At the opening meeting, Tirson looking directly at Lavrov, acknowledged what he called sharp differences between the two countries. But Moscow appeared unready to budge on the primary goal of Tirson's mission, persuading Russia to help remove Assad from power. In what was effectively an ultimatum, Tirson on Tuesday said that Moscow must calculate the costs of remaining an ally of Assad, the Iranians and Lebanon's Shiite militia Hezbollah. Russia's foreign ministry dismissed Tirson's remarks Wednesday. I believe everyone realized a long time ago that there is no use in giving us ultimatums. This is simply counterproductive, ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakova said in remarks aired on the internet news site TV Dazd. The Trump administration on Tuesday said it had collected intelligence that purportedly proved Syrian forces had carried out the deadly chemical weapons attack in the northern Idlib province that led to the U.S. missile strike. Washington further claimed that Russia had advanced knowledge of the chemical strike, an assertion that Moscow denied. Where are Russian and U.S. troops in Syria? We reject any accusations to this effect and would like to remind everyone that Russia has been the only country to demand an unbiased international inquiry into the circumstances of the use of toxic chemicals near Idlib from the very start, Kremlin spokesman Mitri Peskov said. In an interview broadcast Wednesday, President Trump sharply dialed up the rhetoric on Syria, calling Assad an animal whose regime was saved by Russian intervention. And frankly, Putin is backing a person that's truly an evil person. And I think it's very bad for Russia, Trump said on the Fox Business Network's Mornings with Maria show. I think it's very bad for mankind. It's very bad for this world. Russian President Vladimir Putin, in excerpts of an interview to be broadcast in full on Russian television later Wednesday argued that there is no proof Assad's forces carried out the attack and called the U.S. strikes a breach of international law. Putin also said that confidence in an improvement in U.S.-Russian relations was lower now than it had been under the Obama administration. The level of trust at the working level, especially at the military level, has not improved, but most likely has been degraded, Putin said in remarks on the Mir television channel. In his opening remarks, Lavrov also took a subtle dig at the Trump administration, 
saying it was difficult to get clarity on U.S. stances since there are so many vacancies in top positions at the State Department. Putin derisively compared the current situation in Syria to the build-up to the war in Iraq in 2003, when U.S. officials insisted that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction over the objections of international investigators. Moscow wants the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons to investigate the use of chemical weapons in Idlib, one of the last strongholds for beleaguered rebel factions fighting Assad's government. The feuding also played out at the United Nations, where Russia was expected to veto a Security Council resolution to bolster calls for international inquiries into the chemical attack. Earlier this week, forensic experts in Turkey said the ban nerve agent sarin was used. To my colleagues from Russia, you are isolating yourselves from the international community every time one of Assad's planes drop another barrel bomb on civilians and every time Assad tries to starve another community to death, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Nikki Haley told 15-member Security Council. Britain's UN Ambassador Matthew Rickruff accused Russia of siding with a murderous, barbaric criminal, rather than with their international peers. Russia's UN envoy, Vladimir Safronkov, stared back at Rickruft and said he cannot accept that you insult Russia. Secretary of State Rex Tursen held a hastily arranged meeting in Moscow late Wednesday with Russian President Vladimir Putin as he worked to ease tensions with the country over Syria and other global crises, even as he and President Trump, from afar, continued to pressure Putin over his alliance with Bashar Assad. To Aronson, Speaking frankly during a joint press conference in Moscow alongside Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, said U.S.-Russia relations have hit a low point, while stressing the need to improve ties. There is a low level of trust between our two countries. The world's two foremost nuclear powers cannot have this kind of relationship, Tirson said. Those tensions have mounted since Trump ordered a missile strike on an airbase controlled by the Assad government last week, in response to a chemical weapons attack. Tirson and Lavrov spoke after Tirson met in private with Putin at the Kremlin for nearly two hours. Tirson, the first Trump cabinet official to visit Russia, originally was only slated to meet with Lavrov but spoke with Putin after first sitting down with his Russian counterpart. Tirson traveled to Moscow just days after the Trump administration launched missile strikes on an airbase in Syria, angering Bashar al-Assad's allies in Moscow. The strike was in response to a chemical weapons attack earlier last week. Tirson ratcheted up his rhetoric en route to Moscow earlier this week, saying the reign of the Assad family is coming to an end and challenging Russia to reconsider its alliance with the government in Damascus. Trump also told Fox Business Network's Maria Bartiromo that Putin is backing an evil person in Syria, and it's very bad for Russia. At the same time, Trump made clear he's pushing for peace in Syria. He said, we're not going into Syria, but said pressure will be on Russia to ensure peace. If Russia didn't go in and back this animal, you wouldn't have a problem right now, he said. Earlier Wednesday, during a forum at the Newseum in Washington, White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer was asked about what could be on the table at a putin tirson meeting. He spoke to their common interests. I think there is a shared interest in defeating ISIS in the region that we have a national security concern that should align with their national security concern, he said. Spicer had tough words for Russia's alliance with Assad, however. Russia right now is an island, he said. It's Russia, North Korea and Iran, Russia is among that group the only non-failed state. He said Russia is isolating itself by standing by Assad, 